Hey guys, and welcome to another video. Happy Easter! Today I'll be showing you how to make the Sands of Time bracelet. It's made on one loom, and it doesn't go all the way around on one loom, but it covers a little bit more than half your wrist. So yeah, let's get started. But first off, let's list the national days. First of all, it's obviously Easter, like I said earlier, today. And let me pull up my website. Today is also National Caramel Day, National Love Our Children Day, National Deep Dish Pizza Day, National Raisin and Spice Bar Day. So yeah, I like caramel. Caramel is good. Okay, let's get started. So the border band color I'm going to be using today is white, just like I did in the first bracelet that I just showed you. And you're going to start off by making just a simple border. So you're going to go from the bottom middle peg whoop, whoop -doo, out to the left. I'm going to put my hook aside. And then just go upward all the way on the left side until like almost right before the end. Got to grab a whole hunk of bands. some bands in the spot that I always scoot my loom into. But yeah, I have to tilt this just because the way my tripod's positioned. But yeah, today's been a good Easter so far for me. Anyways, now you go from the left into the middle. And then go back down to the bottom and mirror the same thing on the other side. But anyways, I had to get up at 7, well 6 o'clock a.m to ultra serve at 7 o'clock a.m. mass. I was the only one there actually, which is odd. I mean, I guess they really needed servers, so apparently they sent out an email. And no one wants to get up at 6 a.m. to go to like 7 a.m. mass, especially on Easter Sunday. But I was fine with it. I mean, I went to bed really late, but I obviously, honestly, wasn't really that tired, which is weird. And I just went to lunch was good. I gave up white flour for Lent, and which is a lot harder than you might think, because like white flour is in everything, so it was really hard. And I've been making polymer clay donuts, so I've just like had donut cravings all the time. I haven't had a donut yet, but all the white flour stuff I've had today has been good so far. Okie doke. And then done with that, I'll go back down to the bottom. And what you're going to do is you're going to make like a bow tie shape by making two triangles. And you're going to stretch one white band over three pegs. Like that. So that's the left half of your left half of your bow tie. And then the other half just mirrors the left. Like that. Then you make a bunch of these going up the loom, and they do overlap a little bit. See, they overlap at the corners right there. But yeah, you're gonna want to make sure that you don't have like any extra super duper thin bands that you're doing this with, or any bands with like a little fault in them. And then on the way home from brunch, there was like this squirrel that literally, at the last minute, just ran in front of my mom's car and she was like, ah! And yeah, we didn't hit it, but it scared the stuffing out of us. It was just like, why? You're so dumb, you squirrel. It's like, what were you thinking? It's like, just went out at the last minute and we were like, okay, I'll just stand in front of the car right now, whoop to do It's like, like someone could have done an edit of that squirrel and just put, like, put the you mad troll face over it, so it's just like, you mad bro? It made me mad bro. Squirrels. But whenever something like that happens, I'm just like, it's Darwinism at work. 
for you guys who don't know what Darwinism is. I just heard about it too, so. It's basically Darwin's theory of evolution and natural selection, which means that basically whatever species or animal or sometimes even person, they like die from, you know, doing something not very smart. Like that squirrel just running right in front of my mom's car. So that way, the squirrel's genetics, if, if my mom had hit it, <laughs> it probably will get hit though eventually, because come on, it's not very smart apparently. It just means that its genetics won't, you know, obviously, go be passed down through the generations, because, you know, I mean, if it didn't have kids before it got hit. So yeah, <laughs> that's a good enough explanation for you. Basically, its genetics won't be passed down, and there will hopefully be less dove squirrels in the world in the future. Okay, up next is what you're gonna do. You're gonna add these little colored background bands here. And in this bracelet, I didn't really like coordinate them so they'd make like one solid hourglass color. It's the sand of time, because it looks kind of like they're little hourglasses. But anyways, I'm gonna show you how to hopefully make this all one solid color. So that looks more, you know, hourglassy. So you're going to take your first color, which will be purple. I believe that's what I'm using, yes. I think so. And... Hmm. Sorry, I can't remember a color scheme, my color order. Hmm. Purple, blue, green, blue, purple. Okay, I think I'll start off with this blue green. It's Caribbean green. Just gonna cap it on your hook. Just put this out of the way for a minute. This isn't any complicated, super complicated hook work. And then you just pull a band through it. Hold on to this. Put your cap band back on your hook. Take another band and pull it through just the cap band. Bring this back, and then take the first two bands, put them on one corner of your first little triangle of the bow, put the other one in the middle. Well, it doesn't really matter where you put it, actually, as long as it's on one of these three pegs, and as long as there's not two on one peg. Then you take your hook, and you just go into the cap band. I want to put this end right here. So you pull the other end through to meet your first end. So it looks like that. And you're going to mirror that on the other side with the same color. So basically, again, you're going to do the same technique. Cap on your Caribbean green, pull one through it, hold on to the two ends, put the cap band back on, pull another band through just the cap band, and then put the first two bands on one of these next three pegs, one of these Pegs, basically any pegs that a whole triangle band is covering. Put the other band here. And this side's different because, you know, I just loop it through a slightly different way, but with the same results. And there's your first little bow hourglass thing. And I'm going to do my next color blue here, then purple, then blue, then green, and yeah, just continue through that. And I'm just going to do a weird color combo type deal, and yeah, I'll come back after I've finished doing each little bow thingy. Okadook, done this all the way up the loom, and it should look something like this. Now you're going to flip your loom, add a cap band, right at the end, and now you're going to start looping. So you're not really going to loop 
these little background colored bands at all. You're not going to even touch them really. You're just going to loop your white bands. So you're going to start off with these little bow bands in the middle. So you're going to take your hook, put it into the second middle peg, go underneath all the colored bands, grab the second to last white, and pull it to the right, the left, I mean, and then you put it on the top peg and the bottom peg. Don't like stretch it a ton upward though or else it'll break. Just be sure to stretch it as little as possible, just enough to get it there. Now you go underneath all these bands again, take the remaining white, and do the same thing. And then you just repeat that all the way up. Ooh. Blue came off, let me put it back on. There we go. I like the color kind of I used it, like blends well I think. I used Caribbean green, glow in the dark blue, I think it's, I don't remember exactly what they called it, but it comes in its own pack. Then I used glow in the dark purple. And I also, in the middle part right here, I used like a glow in the dark green that came with the mixed pastel glow in the dark pack. Pastel jelly glow in the dark pack. But yeah. And I did do a weird color combo. I went like green, blue, purple, blue, green, yellow, green, green, blue, purple, blue, green. It's just because there are like 11 little bow things. And I wanted there to be like a nice even amount of colors and everything. I wanted it to even out well. But each hourglass should have its own distinct color. Can't wait to see how that turns out. I noticed today that my nails match the malted milk balls that I got. I don't think I, I wonder if I already told you that in this video, but yeah, I really like malted milk balls. They're one of my favorite candies. It's just like chocolate and then crunch. I just love it when they mix in any random crunchy thing or something special in with chocolate because it just makes it more fun and memorable. I also like dark chocolate, like pretty really dark chocolate, like 65 or 70 percent dark. My mom used to get like the 80 or 90 percent dark and it's so bitter. I tried a piece and it's just like the most bitter thing ever. It's not even candy or chocolate or a treat at all. It's just bitter beaniness. Okie doke, now that I'm finished with all that. Now you're just going to loop your borders the normal way you would. So you go under your cat band, grab the second to last white, I'm going to drop my C-clip, pull it to the left, clip a clip, ugh, okie doke. Got so many bands on the floor. Anyways, and then you go underneath all these bands, Grab the bottom white, pull it up, and repeat this process. Make sure you get the very, very bottom white, because there's going to be a lot of white on here, mostly because of these bow things. But generally, the whites that you want to be looping up right now, they're a lot looser than the bow whites, because the bow whites are stretched more. Signs. I wonder what I should talk to you about now. <laughs> I need to make a list of like all the weird sentences I've ever said. Okay then. Because like I've said some really weird sentences in my life. And I just want to remember all of them and look through them. Like if I ever put it in a time capsule and just be like when did this come up in conversation? 
Cause like I just had the thought earlier today when I posted a picture of me holding a malted milk bowl. Put it on Instagram, wishing everyone a happy Easter. I was like, do I need to add a watermark? Nah. I was like, <laughs> and then I thought of the thought. If there's, if this is a world where I have to watermark my pictures of me holding malted milk bowls, then I don't like this world very much. Okay. Uh, someone's having a door closing fest in my house. See, there's another sentence I should add to the book. Who's even doing that and why? Who's opening and closing my doors? My door wasn't opened or closed yet, but pretty sure it will be soon. Another odd thing that's been happening, well not really that odd, just kind of funny at times, is there's a guy across the street who like, some people you know how like to pound their bass in their car so it's just like just like the whole time and you can even hear it outside of the car and it's just like how, how do you not have hearing damage but anyways he pounds his bass really loud so it literally vibrates everything in my house it's really funny actually like I can hear everything vibrating I just hope his ears are okay. I obviously don't really pound my bass in my car. Well, my mom's car, technically. That's the one I ride in the most. Because we listen to classical music. And that doesn't really have any bass. Okay. Now that I've looped all that, I'm just going to take my hook and go into all these bands at the end here. Grab a what? it through. Make sure it stays on your hook and carefully pull the bracelet off the loom. Might have to pull it off peg by peg like I'm doing. The middle peg shouldn't really need much pulling or anything like that. Mostly the outside pegs. crazy when your pin bars start to come off. If your pin bars have ever come off like in the middle of a bracelet, that is like the most annoying and sad thing ever in the universe. Okay. Might need a little bit of pulling. Straighten everything out a bit. And there's your bracelet. Now I'm going to add a small little extension for my last bracelet. I used an extension of about six bands. So that's how many I think I'll do now. Four, five, six. And then take your clip, clip it, and then you find the cap end at the other end, and then use your C clip to clip it. And there's your bracelet. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.